Hey guys, I'm back with a quick update today regarding SIF chain rewards, how to find them, how to calculate them, and basically kind of how to use them to your advantage, depending on what kind of pool you're jumping into. Of course, if you haven't seen last week's video, go check that out. It is a complete quick start guide on SIF chain, going from fiat all the way into the SIF chain decks and starting to pool. But after you've gone through that video and you've onboarded onto the SIF chain decks, you'll probably have two main questions. And the first is how the heck do you see your rewards? And the second is with so many options of uh, tokens to pair with, how do you choose the best one? So in this video, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the SIF chain rewards tracker uh, so you can figure out exactly how much you're earning in whatever pool you're in. With that, I'll also be showing you some of my pool balances and how they've changed over the past couple of weeks, uh, which has given me a lot of insight into how I want to use these pools moving forward for different kinds of strategies. So I'm going to walk you through each of those. Well, let's get right into it here. So let's say you have uh, a pool like I do in the Rowan USDC pairing. Now you can see your balance here on this your liquidity section and also the uh, amount of rewards paid to the pool for the current period. Again, with the new reward system, all of your rewards for these pools are just being pushed right back into the pool and auto compounding. So there's no claim system, it's all just here in the pool, so your token balance should be increasing over time. The problem is the only way you have of tracking this is figuring out your ownership percentage of the pool, which would be your pool share up here, and then dividing that by the amount of rewards paid to the pool. Uh, but the problem is this can only be done for one week at a time for the current period. And it's not super accurate because this 0.02% is probably uh, not exactly 0.02%. So long story short, it's very difficult to track your rewards in a given period just based on the information you see here. Luckily, some of the validators on SIFChain have created their own rewards tracker at SIFChain.app. Very easy URL, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. I'll link it below just in case anyway. But you can go here and you can track every single reward for all of your pools ever since the start of the rewards program, uh, which was April 19th. That is the new rewards program, I should say, by uh, the Ascension uh, program. Before we jump into the actual rewards here, I do want to cover this information here that they posted on the landing page because it's very important to understand if you are pooling on SIFChain. This basically explains exactly how the rewards are paid out, and it's definitely worth a read if you still have a poor understanding of the reward system. So as we know, now all rewards are auto compounded every block, which is every six seconds or so. Depending on the dollar value of the total value locked, the pool is going to be injected with new Rowan rewards. And this next point is really important. As Rowan is injected into the pool, because those are the only rewards paid into the pool, the pool becomes imbalanced. So these pools originally started at 50-50 ratio. Uh, for example, there would be $1 of Rowan for every $1 of USDC in the pool. But now, because only Rowan is injected, this Rowan amount is growing every single time that new rewards are added to the pool. And therefore, the pools are becoming imbalanced where they're slightly more weighted in Rowan. But then arbitrage traders come in as soon as these imbalances arise. So if there's an arbitrage opportunity, which uh, if you go back to the decks, it'll always show you this arbitrage opportunity right here. When there is one of these opportunities, traders will come in and immediately bring that back to as close to zero as they can uh, and still make a profit. So what happens is in this process, they are bringing these non Rowan assets and selling them into the pool to bring that weighting of Rowan back down to a more uh, balanced level. And in effect, they are reducing some of those Rowan rewards and turning them into the other asset in the pool. So then instead of just earning these Rowan rewards that are naturally injected into the pool, you end up earning rewards in both Rowan and the other token. So this is going to be important to keep in mind as we start looking at the rewards you're earning in these pools and how this system is actually affecting the tokens that you get uh, as rewards. As we said, the ratio of these pools started at 50-50, but they start to shift towards Rowan as the purchasing power increases from the PMTP policies, uh, which is a, an additional update that they've added on top of the Ascension program that is making the Rowan more valuable and stronger to purchase with. So we can see that if we go over here and look at the Rowan USDC pool, for example, where the pool TVL is about $30 million. However, only $9.7 million are made up of USDC. So this is almost a two to one ratio of Rowan to USDC. And that's going to be very important to consider if you're bringing assets over to pool in here because you're not going to be pooling them 50-50 anymore. Um, as long as symmetric pooling is a requirement, you're going to need to pool more Rowan than the other asset, which means you might need to sell some of that other asset or bring in other assets to trade into Rowan to match the token that you want to pool with. And you can see here pool at pool ratios is still a requirement. Uh, this should be switching in the next week or so, I believe, so you can pool asymmetrically. But at the time, you have to pool with these token ratios uh, which again just means it's really important to understand that they're not going to be 50-50. I think the use of arbitrage and the thought that these pools are becoming imbalanced and then are required to be traded back into balance might scare people, uh, but the truth is it really works in your favor because you're getting these Rowan rewards and then you're also getting that diversified back into the other token. 
so you're going to grow both stacks in most cases. The main fear, of course, is in permanent loss, but as you're going to see by my rewards, this happens pretty rarely because these rewards are so generous. And once you get to the site, obviously just hit this dashboard button and it's going to take you to the landing page uh, to track your exact rewards. So all you're going to do is paste your SIF chain address right up here in the top right corner and hit search. And once it loads, you get all of the information you could possibly need about your SIF chain balances uh, from both liquidity pooling and staking, which is a nice little uh, benefit on there too. So right up top, you'll see the total assets value, and that's going to be the balance of all of the tokens in your liquidity pools, all of the tokens just sitting in your wallet, and all of the tokens being staked on SIFChain. As you can see, I keep most of my assets LP'd. I have about 13,000 in there, and about $1,200 in staking. I don't really keep much in my balance because you can earn so much by putting in the work in one of those two spots. But here's where you can track your rewards right here. So you have LP rewards plus rebalance. So this is going to be all the rewards that are paid into the pool, plus any rebalancing that takes place because of these arbitrage traders. Uh, but it's going to be valued in the Rowan token right here. So for the past week, I've gotten about $200 of rewards after the rebalancing and the pool injections. But since the start of the new program, which again was on April 19th, uh, today is May 6th while I'm filming this. So uh, it's been a little over two and a half weeks. Um, and I've earned about $1,200 on my pool balances. Again, these are just for LPs, uh, so this does not include staking rewards. And then if you scroll down, it'll show you the exact breakdown of every single pool you're in. So the first thing you have here is the token amount, and that's the exact exposure of tokens you have within a given pool. And then, of course, right next to it, you have the dollar value of each sides of those pool. But this next section is the one you really want to pay attention to because it shows you exactly how many of your rewards have been paid in the Rowan token and how much of your rewards have been earned in the other token that you've been pulling with. And basically these numbers will show you if you've experienced impermanent loss or not. If you have a cumulative amount that is negative, that's impermanent loss. If it's positive, you've not lost anything. It's all positive, it's all gains. And I'm not too surprised here because some of these pools such as Adam, uh, Legacy, and Luna, I have very small pool amounts that I've just added recently and uh, right before the market kind of melted down uh, yesterday, uh, which was May 5th. And actually prior to that, I didn't have any impermanent loss on my pools. They were all positive for both token balances, which was really cool but I do want to take a closer look at a few of these. So I want to start with my Juno balance here where I have about 90 Juno tokens and 14,000 Rowan tokens. If you've been keeping up with either of these tokens lately, you might be expecting major impermanent loss, which I definitely was before looking at my rewards. Over the past month, this is the Juno chart. And over the last month, this is the Rowan chart. So these charts could not be further apart. The divergence in price has been terrible. Uh, so I've just been expecting major impermanent loss here as people trade these back into balance and costing me tokens one way or another. But the crazy part is when you look at the cumulative rewards, I've actually come out positive in both tokens. So while my pool value has undoubtedly been kicked down because of the Juno price, I've still come out ahead because of these APR rates. Uh, you can see I have uh, taken a little bit of a negative loss here for the week, likely because of some major volatility in Juno over the past couple of days. But still over the long term, uh, and permanent loss has not been an issue, which is shocking because of, again, how different these price movements have been. You would think that would be the worst possible case scenario for pooling assets, which it absolutely is, but it all works out because I'm earning 240, 250% APR on this pool. However, with that in mind, I've realized I do not want as much exposure to Juno as I have. There's just so much drama going on. Um, I initially started with Juno when I made this video here talking about $1,000 of Juno. And that's really because I could stake about 20 Juno tokens and qualify for numerous airdrops. So that was really my goal with getting into Juno. And I was getting in around $40. So as the price kept dropping, oh, this is yeah, a little over a month ago, as the price dropped to around the 20s, I thought the upside potential has grown so much. I'm going to start pooling with this asset so I can continue earning on it and possibly participate in that back towards the upwards uh, price movement while I pool and earn uh, those APR rates on them. Obviously hindsight is 2020, but this did not work out for me because Juno has just kept crashing and crashing and crashing. But again, the cool part of that is that even if I just wanted to stack the Juno token, I've still come out ahead here with both 20 more Juno tokens and still gaining Rowan in the process. So while the price has been down, that's just a bummer because I've lost dollar value. But if my goal here is just to accumulate the tokens, I've still come out ahead. And that's a really cool benefit of being here on, on Rowan and... Uh, on SIF chain and, and earning these crazy rewards. So the next pool I wanna look at is my USDC pool because this is where I keep the majority of my value here on SIF chain, about $7,500 out of $12,000. So definitely over half of my pooled assets are in this pool. And unfortunately I have experienced some impermanent loss this week, about $140 of USDC, um, which is pretty close to the total here of my cumulative 144. 
So that's, again, simply because the market has been going so badly lately, I have been losing some, some balance there. But prior, prior to these past couple of days, again, there was no impermanent loss here. And the perk, of course, is that I'm pooling with a USDC stablecoin. So the volatility of one of these assets is non-existent. So I really only have to worry about losses when the Rowan token moves up and down uh, respective to the USDC token, which again is only always $1. But compared to some of these other pools where I've taken significant and permanent loss over the last week, for example, Juno, I did take $10 of impermanent loss, which is about uh, $100 in Juno lost right there. And that's only a, that's like this pool value is half as much here as this pool value where I've taken almost equivalent losses. And that's because there's two volatile assets in this pool, which are going to create more impermanent loss when the uh, price fluctuations are vastly different from each other. So I'm sure all of these negatives will flip back to the positive in the coming weeks as these rewards continue. Uh, it just doesn't help that the market is a bloodbath right now. But in light of that, this is giving me a lot to think about on how I approach these pools and what kind of strategies I want to use within them. Obviously, this USDC pool has been phenomenal in this market because only one of the assets is changing in value, um, and that makes it much easier to earn consistent rewards. So in every other pool on here, you're going to see some major volatility, especially if you've been involved in the market the past couple weeks. And that's why I've really grown to love this Rowan USDC pool, because it is essentially just a money printer for me. While I did experience some impermanent loss on the USDC here, uh, particularly in the last week because of the market, the rewards are just so consistent and so significant compared to some of these other pools where the token value, uh, like something like Juno, has been dropping pretty quickly. So now that I've kind of figured out that this Rowan USDC pool is just my money printer here, um, I love the stability, obviously, of the USDC token. The rewards are going to be so much more consistent, but I'm not really concerned with stacking US dollars. I want to uh, you know, accumulate some of these other assets, especially as the market is dropping, just so that when it does rebound, I have exposure to these assets that have the ability to grow unlike the USDC token. So what I'm doing here is taking this pool APR, I'm dividing it by 52 to get my weekly APR rate. And I'm gonna pull up the calculator and show you guys that real quick. So we take 225.24 divided by 52 weeks in a year. So I'm earning about 4.3% uh, rewards on this balance in a given week. So what I'm going to do with that balance is come over here I currently have some unbonding right here, so I'll, I'll show you what this looks like on a different one. I think I have some here. Yeah, so if I go unbond, I'm going to choose about 4%, not 100, 4%, and I'm going to unbond this amount every single week. And the reason I'm doing that is because then I can take the rewards from this stable pool that, again, is essentially just printing me money every single week, and then I can take those rewards and funnel them into some of these other pools where I'm more interested in accumulating the other tokens. And again, as we saw recently, unfortunately, this does not eliminate impermanent loss. I will still have the risk of doing that, especially when the markets are ugly like they have been this week. But in most cases, especially in this Juno, this is what really shocks me here, I can still come out ahead and be positive on both tokens, even if I'm pooling on assets that experience some impermanent loss in the short term. And because these rates are so high, and because they're going to continue for several more weeks at a minimum of these you know, high three-digit uh, APR rates, I know over the long term, I'm going to accumulate both tokens in a positive amount, uh, regardless of the pool that I'm in. Not financial advice, obviously, I can't say that for sure, but I can say with a pretty high level of confidence that I believe that is going to happen because of how the things have been going so far. On the other hand, I've gotten a little greedy with some of these pools, uh, namely the Rowan and Juno pool. I thought I was jumping in there after some downward price movement, taking advantage of a great opportunity because I could pool, earn these rates, and then when Juno shot back up, I could also experience a big bump in my pool value as a result. <laughs> Obviously, that has not been the case. But again, the good news is if I just wanted to accumulate the Juno token and earn some APR rates while I did it, I still came out ahead. I got the positive Juno token balances. So um, that's really changed my perspective on what I want to pool with here. So I'm actually going to be moving most of my Juno token balance. Um, I'm going to be gradually unbonding that over the next couple of weeks. Again, Juno's just been beaten up so bad. I feel like there's got to be some upward movement at some point. So I'm just kind of gradually taking, taking chunks out of this um, until there's nothing left. But I'm really satisfied with my Juno exposure through staking. I don't need to be exposing myself to more volatility and more risk here just for the sake of the slightly higher APR um, and the potential for Juno to increase in price. Uh, because again, I have enough exposure to Juno price elsewhere. Instead, I'd rather be using this value and getting exposure to the assets I want to accumulate over the long term. Uh, a little bit, Adam, but mostly here I'm focused on Luna and the legacy token. So by pooling these assets, or repooling, I should say, from, 
from Juno into these other pools, as well as taking these weekly rewards from my USDC pool value, I can gradually stack here, here, and here, and gaining more exposure to those tokens over the long term, which is really the goal. So if your goal here is income, the Rowan USDC pool is really attractive for that reason, just because you know you'll have that stability with the weekly rewards. Um, and then you have the flexibility to use them how you like. You can just keep compounding to increase that income. Or like what I'm doing, I'm going to take some of these rewards and use them to stack the other tokens I want to accumulate over the long term, uh, which is especially effective right now as the market is bleeding just about everywhere. And again, as I'm pulling with some of these assets that I want to accumulate, I'm not as concerned with impermanent loss um, because of these APR rates, right? So it's going to keep accumulating more Rowan in those accounts. The arbitrage traders are going to balance it out. And uh, in most cases, unless it's been a couple days like it has been recently, we're going to see these account balances continue to grow in both tokens. But throughout all of this, I think it's also important to remember that we are no longer at these 50-50 ratios for these pools. So you do need to be aware of how much of your pooled assets are exposed to the other token and how much are exposed to Rowan. So while I am thrilled to be getting exposure to some of these other tokens, I'm realizing it's not, it's not going to be a full 50-50% um, split. So I may not be getting the full exposure, which means you just really have to be careful about how much you're pooling, what kind of exposure you want to these assets, and whether it's going to fit your, your strategies and your goal. So that's how I've been thinking about these liquidity pools lately and how I'm going to adjust my strategy moving forward to make sure I get the exposure to the assets I want, keep some uh, money coming into that USDC pool, but not gain unnecessary risk and volatility through some of the assets I was previously pulling with just because I got a little greedy and wanted to capitalize on some dropping prices. Again, I will leave the link to the sifchain.app dashboard here below if you're interested. Also, big shout out to the validators who are responsible for creating this. That is fasthub.io and nmnode. Uh, definitely consider staking if you want to support them um, because they are going out of the way to build this for the community. Um, and it is a very, very helpful tool. If you missed my last video on the intro to the SIFChain Dex, be sure to check that out here. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.